So now that I've done this particular still life in a little bit tighter fashion, I wanted to sort of go for it. And I thought it would be interesting uh, to do these back to back. So what I mean by that is, you know, as soon as I finished the previous one, um, I cracked forward with this one. And, you know, I do that sometimes because, you know, whenever you do things back to back, you're already familiar with the subject. Um, you, you're, you sort of have a, a good feeling for what to expect. So now you can uh, focus on something a little bit different now. You know, you can sort of take it in any direction that you want to take it. And for me, you know, I want to take it loose. So that's what I'll do. I'll begin with the background. And that's just some neutral tint, uh, probably mixed with whatever's on the palette, some greens or who knows what was down. Uh, but yeah, mo mostly neutral tint, uh, which tends to be a little bit uh, more of a cooler gray. And, you know, I'll pop that in there and, and start moving forward now. And, you know, a lot of this one will be done maybe a little more a la prima or wet into wet, but... I'm always um, aware and keeping in check what's going on in front of me. Uh, so there, that blue was way too dark. So instead of wiping it away and getting panicking about it, I just wiped some of the paint off my brush and I dipped my brush in water and I knew that would dilute it. And I just went back into it to remove uh, some of that pigment. Um, so that's just sort of going with the flow um, of what's happening and a little bit of experience knowing that, hey, if I start to apply a paint or a wash and it looks really dark or too saturated, then I'll have to wipe it away. I can just clean my brush and come back with a damp brush and just kind of blend it out, you know, smooth it out some. And then when you do that, you know, you may end up with a value that would work for you. So now I'll put in a green, a little more of a vivid green uh, tabletop than I had before. Um, so here I'm, you know, kind of letting things go a little bit looser, uh, letting the brush dance around a little bit more on the paper, uh, a little more wet into wet, uh, less cautious, but uh, just staying on top of, of what's happening in front of me. If I have to react to something, uh, then that's what I'll do. So I'm sort of uh, painting intuitively, I guess. So here, going really thick here on the paint for the bottle. And I know that background is still damp. So it's going to bleed out some. And that's okay. Uh, I'm willing to to accept that. And, and I'm saying to myself, okay, so what? Let it bleed. Let it go. Because I know... It's not going to ruin the end result too much at this point, or at least I don't think so. So I'll let it do its thing. And they're just dropping some darker values into the bowl on the dark side and letting it bleed and do its thing. Okay, so the here kind of going back to uh, harnessing the characteristics of the medium, letting the medium... Uh, do some work for me and letting it exist a little bit more in the work and you know bleed and run everything else now everything is still dry or everything is dry now I should say and I've got control back in my court so um, having everything dry means that whatever I put on now is going to hold its shape a little bit better okay so that initial wash though was lovely it's really loose and the yellows are running into the white bowl some of the green uh, running into the tablecloth and you know it has a nice look about it so I don't want to uh, take all of that you know I don't want to completely paint over all of those happy accidents you know, the key now is to do just enough negative space painting and add just enough darker value to where uh, those things exist but is giving form 
to the objects. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of aware and cognizant of, you know, trying not to uh, over detail things and, you know, trying to make decisions on what I absolutely need and what can I just say, ah, you know what, I don't need that. And if I put that in there, I'm going to lose, you know, this particular quality, which I don't want to lose. So here I'll go back in with a darker value and I will uh, pop that bottle. But all the while, I'm not just painting the bottle. I'm thinking about the edges, you know, the edges of the, you know, the jar, the bowl. And how can I use that dark hue uh, to help me shape everything else? So negative space painting uh, with a little bit of positive space painting. So letting it uh, do two jobs. All right, so now I'll move in with a nice cherry red color there, nice deep red, and that's probably too much, but no big deal. I'll just come back with pure red and just blend that right into it. Now it will be easy to get fussy right here and start, you know, messing with that apple, cherry, whatever the heck that is, um, and just work it, overwork it. But I'm like, well, you know what? This painting is going to be a little less cautious. It's going to have more abstract qualities to it. So you know what? It can live. Okay, I can get away with that being a thing uh, for in this piece. So I don't have to be exact because uh, whenever you know, you're painting, if I'm trying to do something photorealistic, then obviously everything needs the same amount of attention. Uh, when you're doing things looser, uh, then you have to know that, you know, there's certain areas and most areas that you just simply need to let it go. You know, it doesn't need all of that information. Imperfections are really what makes the piece work uh, as a whole in the end. So, again, just sort of keeping that in my back pocket as I go um, is a help. Um so at this point, I'm going to switch brushes. I was painting with that little needle brush for probably too long. Um, but I'm going to switch now to that pointed round, get some of these shadows in, cast shadows. And again, uh, nice and loose with the brush strokes. I'm not trying to copy everything I see in the image. It's just about making it look interesting and somewhat carefree on the paper. Um, so in the art, so at this point, honestly, I'm not even looking at the artwork anymore or the photograph that inspired me. I'm thinking more about uh, changing and reacting and responding, I should say, uh, to what I see in front of me. So I thought that background was a little bit too blue. Um, it, it just sort of clashed with the dark blue bottle also clash with the green tabletop so it was like too much of a cool color to me too many cool colors at once coming at me for my attention so i got this sort of warmish gray uh wash it's fairly weak but it's strong enough to layer over that gray and i think that's better i think that sort of pushes that background out of the picture a little bit and it doesn't make it um, um, you know, so boring as far as color. Now the the blue the stripes I'm putting down now this sort of you know country sort of plaid looking strokes um, is just really done spontaneously. I just felt like the piece was a little bit could use a little bit of that loose strokes and movement to it. So I thought, you know, adding that um, kind of help, you know, give it a little more interest. And now I'm just using that titanium white to add some reflective quality uh, to some of the surfaces here. And I think all in all, you know, this is working out pretty good. So I, you know, doing these pieces back to back like this, starting a little bit tighter, uh, working with the form and space and values and all that stuff, you know, allowed me to kind of let it rip a little bit on the second version. And um, 
I think it you know turned out pretty good. I like the imperfections. I like you know the things are cohesive, and I think as a whole, you know it it works pretty well. So I will see you guys in the next one.